Hello, all you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to take about a minute and a half to tell you about a few sponsors that not only help to make it possible to produce this show five days a week, but that I'm also genuinely passionate about promoting. The first longtime stellar supporter of the show that I want to mention is Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online with over 8,000 video titles. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. The second sponsor I'm sincerely passionate about promoting is Purium. It's no mystery that bringing your mind, body, and spirit into balance is necessary if a person truly intends to manifest the greatest and grandest version of themselves. So if you've been looking for a way to easily get organic superfoods into your system every day with a simple plan that can help you reestablish a healthier foundation and relationship with food, like I was doing before I found Purium, I highly recommend going to positivehead.com forward slash transformation and checking out the videos and interviews there where I dive deeply into discussions explaining why I take these products every day. And should you ultimately end up on ishoppurium.com to purchase any of their 50 plus amazing superfood products, be sure to use the code positivehead, all one word, for a 25% discount. All right, all you positive heads. (laughs) I'm running out of variations, people. Send me some variations. Yeah, that's a good idea. You guys can come up with some. (laughs) Hope you are well and schwell, S-C-H-W-E-L-L, this fine, terrific Tuesday as I record. It's a pleasure and an honor, as always, to co-create and explore perspective shifting right and getting ourselves in alignment with our higher self and and essentially learning to see uh the way our expanded or higher self sees things right allowing that expanded version of ourselves to come through and to um you know navigate this 3d reality from that perspective really brings peace no matter what's going on doesn't necessarily bring happiness uh, at all times but you can be at peace with what is and that's what we're going to explore more today after a um, post that was made in the facebook group uh, sort of i saw just a little bit ago and i thought yep that's the topic i'm going to talk about it i've talked about it before i'm sure i'll talk about it again Uh, it was made by amanda in the positive heads facebook group which by the way if you're not there Uh, You are missing out, or rather, we are missing you, and you are missing from us. As they say in French, and maybe I'm going to butcher this, maybe I'm not, but I'm going to try, tu me manque, which is, it's not really saying I miss you, it's, which is closer to saying you are missing from me, which is pretty sweet, right? 
leave it to the French to come up with the with something so romantic as that. But you are missing from us in the Positive Heads Facebook group. Actually, this French thing's come up a lot. I had a lovely listener, the sweetest of souls, uh, speak French to me a few days ago. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's come up a few times. Uh, several listeners, actually. Another listener that speaks French uh, is their um, primary language. Uh, I've had quite a few conversations with over the last few months. And then I don't think I shared this with you guys. And this is a total... Um, Total digression, by the way, <laughs> but you guys know I'm subject to do this from time to time, a lot of the time. Uh, yeah, I, so I don't, I don't think I told this story, so I'll tell you real quick. Um, so I was sitting uh, two months ago, I was sitting, and if I did, my memory of when I say what, when, where, how, you know, who knows? You might, if so, you might be hearing it again for the second time. But I was sitting, uh, I was uh, up in uh, Lake Tahoe for some business and uh, hung out after the business meetings uh, for a couple of days with my friend. We ended up playing a little blackjack one evening. So not typically the place I would expect a sort of a, well, what, what unfolded. So I'm sitting there and uh, playing blackjack for a little while. And uh, King of Hearts comes up, which is my destiny card. You guys have heard me talk about destiny cards before. Pretty cool. Predate Tarot. You can look yours up online. Uh, I'm King of Hearts and it came up and I said, oh, that's my lucky card. Maybe I should, I should, you know, double my bet or some joke like that. And the woman next to me goes, well, actually you are a king. And then she's like, you're Leo, right? And I'm like, yeah. And this is just a complete stranger. And I'm like, yeah. And uh, then she went on to say, you know, like all these details. Like I've had a lot of incredible uh, um, guests on the show, but I've never really had anyone go into detail past life stuff or have I experienced like a lot of my friends or guests, uh, my own personal recounting of past life stuff. Um, but, uh, so th this has caught me totally by surprise. I did not expect at a blackjack table for someone to then go, you, you actually, first she was like, you're Leo, right? And I'm like, yep. And then she's like, yep, you were a King. You, you know, and she went in in 1600, you spoke French, you had eight children, you like killed someone in a Lance battle. And, um, but they actually really deserved it. And you were this, you know, brilliant strategist who helped to figure out what direction to go with the battles and all the stuff. Right. And I'm like, I don't know who knows. Right. I, I just like, it was, it was amusing at the very least. Then she goes to the bathroom, comes back. She goes, okay, they're showing me more in the 1300. You are a woman. You had a short life. You couldn't have children, which is why you had eight in this life. Um, you know, in the one in the 1600s, and um, she's like, yeah, so you, you lived a short life in the 1300s as a woman. You didn't like being you didn't like being a woman, being marginalized, you know, how much you were marginalized during those times. Um, but, uh, yeah, then you had all these children the next time. And that's why she said you're sort of indifferent to children or, you know, you're not caught up, not indifferent, but not caught up on. I need lots of, you know, to have lots of children. Um, of course I have one and I'm very satisfied with that. So, um, yeah, that was kind of a, a fun little happening and who knows, right? I mean, uh, I think I've probably been a peasant a lot more than I've ever been a king, but it was cool. I did try and look it up and she's like, okay, you spoke French in this this Lance thing that was the first thing that was shown to me was like an either England and Belgium. And so I was looking and there was like a French king who had like oh, more than eight children and they called him the happy king in the 1600s. Um, but, uh, and he was really into battling, but you know, weren't all the kings. So who knows? I was probably like his, his, his uh, court jester or something. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I digress as I do uh, from time to time, a lot of the time. And today, the post in the Positive Heads Facebook group by Amanda, uh, she wrote, Ever have moments or time in your life where multiple sad, bad things happen at once? That's where I am at this moment. My grandmother is dying and my dog is having seizures out of nowhere. My husband is having health issues. I'm just here trying to hold it together and be positive. On top of all that, on my way to work today, I saw a bad car crash. It's like the moment I decide I'm going to be positive, something comes and kicks me down. That's just one example. It seems to happen every day. Any pods you can suggest to help me stay positive? And of course, I saw this post and felt the, the inspiration 
to speak on it. So here's a pod for you all about it. And I'm sure, by the way, anytime you guys want to search the archives, the best place to do that, I don't know, you know, I know all of you listen through different mediums, Spotify or iTunes, you know, uh, podcast apps or, you know, CastBox or wherever. Um, As far as searching the archives, if you go to positivehead.com, you can search all the way back to episode number one and you can search keywords and that sort of thing. So just to throw that out there, um, that's a great way to find topics. But, um, yeah, this whole idea of when it rains, it pours, right? I saw a quote by Joan Marquis. Uh, oh, some French there for you again. Uh, when it rains, it pours. Maybe the art of life is to convert tough times to great experiences. We can choose to hate the rain or dance in it. And that's really, you know, th- this whole this whole thing of having uh, it, it raining, you know, when it rains, it pours and and things really falling apart a lot of times they're falling apart so that they can fall together you know when you're on this spiritual path i've seen um, some memes lately that really touch on this um you know this like funny meme uh basically showed what what you know people think of when they think of their uh spiritual awakening and like is this very fluffy and love light kind of imagery and then it's like what really happens and it's just like getting someone who's just getting you know their butt kicked getting uh wrung through the ringer so to speak and so it's you know what happens for a lot of people uh and of course a lot in that are that tune into this show are people who are you know, newer in their sort of awakening process, their re-membering process. And um, not to say you're not going to have trials and tribulations 30 years in. You know, I'm 20 years into my own journey and actually 20 plus years in now. Wow. Um, and, um, and, you know, of course, I still have trial and tribulation and all of those things. And it comes in waves and, you know, life itself is cyclical, Right. And so you're going to have, you know, a time for the flowers to bloom, a time for the rains. You know, I I actually had posted in the Positive Heads Facebook group um, a a meme the other day that was went right along with this. It was a picture of a flower uh, in the downpouring rain and there was a little caterpillar next to him and the flowers like this is not what I wanted. And then the next half of the meme is, you know, the sun is out. The, the caterpillar has turned into a butterfly and, and then the flower says, but maybe it was what I needed. And so when you can bring that perspective, you know, to, uh, the rain, when you can rain, when it's raining, you can look for rainbows, right? When it's dark, you can start looking for stars. When you can bring that perspective to them, now you're really being, um, you're being sort of trained. You're in you're in the trenches of what you came here to do. We did not come here for it to be all floaty and fluffy and happy the whole time. It just is not part of the the program. And these these breakdowns can ultimately lead to breakthroughs. You know, things that are falling apart a lot of times are doing so so something better can fall together. So things can be rearranged in your life. And a lot of times that looks very chaotic. It looks very chaotic to uh, the caterpillar in the chrysalis becoming a butterfly. That's not a pretty scene when the you know, cells are breaking down and turning into a goo that the imaginal cells then consume to turn into the butterfly. It's, um, you know, <clears throat> as Brene Brown uh, put it, breakdowns and spiritual awakenings, one does not happen without another. So if you start to look at shift your perspective to the lens of the way your expanded self, your higher self, or your miraculous self, right? Sort of the combination of uh, your most advanced human form and your higher self, the, the, the gate between the two, the bridge between the two. You move into that perspective and you can see it as, ah, okay, I'm going through a lot right now. This is a, this is a good sign. This is a good sign that, you know, something is happening. I, I talked a little bit um, recently about, um, you know, having, <clears throat> having like uh, red rashiness, uh, like uh, next to my nose, uh, and it'll come sporadically. It's like rosacea or eczema or something. And just looking at all the, uh, like, as I researched on, okay, what is this? How did this happen? I've had very little, you know, I haven't been to the doctor and I don't know how long. I haven't been in the hospital since I was born. You know, it's like, I'm not used to very many uh, weird things with my body happening. And um, so I'm like, okay, I'm researching. What is this about? What What is it? And it's like, okay, your, your body is actually... Um, 
it, what's happening, it's actually a good sign. It's it's releasing toxins. And these toxins are probably tied to my gut in this case and, and you know, diet in some way, shape, or form. There's so much toxins in our environment. And, you know, the more I want to become a vessel and I'm choosing, anointing myself, as anyone can do, to make me an instrument of thy peace, right, to higher self-source, uh, work through me, I, I, I am... Uh, intending to be a light, a vessel for light to flow into the world, right? It's like, okay, well, if you're choosing yourself to that, you're, you're stepping into a larger role. What, what's the blockages here? What's happening? Oh, there's toxins. And, and how, you know, if we're going to have light coursing through you, then let's remove the toxins. And that's essentially what's happening is when, when, you are releasing, in my case, with this this rashiness, it's like, oh, your body is actually has enough vitality after running all your organs to release and dump some of these toxins. And in this case, for you, it's dumping them in this way. Other people, it could be, you know, something totally different. There's all kinds of ways to remove these things from your system. But so, um, so what's actually happening, what appears to be bad is really good and when you go on a like hardcore like cleansing the people who've had it really bad you know they show before and after pictures it's like this hardcore cleansing process for them um it's like uh one of the guys i was listening to he's like yeah i got sick like flu-like symptoms for a week all these toxins are being dumped so a lot of times as we step into our next greatest and grandest version of ourselves the rain will start to come right it is like you're being stretched you're being expanded to see what you can uh you know can you take more can you uh, deal with more can more flow through you and that's going to come in when it's coming in multiple forms instead of um, you know, viewing it as like, why is this happening to me? Oh man, this redness is happening on my face. Th- that must be bad. No, actually what's bad if it wasn't happening. Cause then it's the toxins are staying in your system, right? So, um, this is, uh, this is just like a child that has growing pains, right? It's going to, it's going to sting sometimes. And, um, it's, it's part of the process. And if you, you're where you're really getting the opportunity in this case, these types of situations is to view them in a way that you didn't before. It doesn't mean you won't be sad if something um, difficult happens or, you know, someone you love is hurting or passing. I'm not diminishing those things at all. Um, I'm, I'm just encouraging you to look at it through the lens of, Hmm, okay, maybe this is happening to expand my growth to, to it's happening for me so that I can be more and deal with more and be a, a, a larger vessel for light to flow through. I saw a quote, uh, and it wasn't, it didn't say who, who wrote it, but I loved it. It said, I don't pay attention to the world ending. It has ended for me many times and begins again in the morning. So that's the truth of the situation in which you find yourself. You're an eternal being that's always been and always will be. Change is guaranteed. You are going to be stretched again and again and again. And the um, branches of your being are going to continue to expand, uh, reach farther and higher into the sky as you grow. But your roots are going to grow as well, right? The counterbalance. And that counterbalance sometimes is going to be things that, uh, that sting, that break you open, that have you writhing, you know, in pain even and, and just uh, sorrow. And instead of resisting those things, allowing it, allowing it fully to flow through you, not repressing it, not making it, uh, you know, not judging things as good or bad, but part of the process. If we look at anything, if we take a, a snapshot, and our whole life is really a snapshot in eternity, right? It's like it's like you're walking on a line when really if you could zoom out uh, from the higher self's perspective, it's it's part of this giant circle of perfection. But if you just look at one clip in that, that walk, that jaunt, that journey, that can be a difficult part. Even though someone's whole life can be a difficult part of of. You know, their line, it's like, oh, man. And then that happens, right? You see it. People who have had lifetimes, you know. The woman, uh, supposedly in the 1300s, couldn't have children, lived a short life, was marginalized by men, and was not a fan. <laughs> like, okay, that looks like, like, wow, what a crappy, you know, existence. Well, but that played into something bigger. That played into something bigger. And the tapestry is still being woven, and when you can start to, it, this at least helps it to, to make it uh, easier to navigate these trying times because they're inevitable. And if you look at them as a rite of passage and you approach them as a, as a sort of a 
spiritual warrior perspective, ah, this is like, wow, it's really coming down on me now. And it's going to, this, you know, smooth seas never made for a skilled sailor. And I'm going to use this opportunity not to feel sorry for myself or feel defeated. I'm going to dig down deep and, and pull up that, that, power and belief in myself and use it to strengthen my resolve to make me more uh fit as a as a spiritual being speaking of this um whole idea i found a really short clip here uh, where tony robbins is talking about how to handle breakdowns and some of you know his perspective um as he's uh dealt with many um you know many uh, very difficult challenging things in his own life um take a listen I, I, they sent me a list of questions you had just to kind of give me a peek. That was one of the questions. And I was like, you know, it's interesting. It, it's breakdowns. It's certainly not something I experienced, but it's not because I'm so talented or so mm-hmm. brilliant or so fearless. It's just you're like an athlete. You're an athlete. Yeah. You're in shape. Yeah. Right? You're not going to have a reaction in your body like somebody who doesn't take care of themselves. Right. So, you know, I believe, I don't believe in emotional intelligence. I think it's useful, but I'm mm. more interested in emotional fitness because mm. intelligence is a capability. Fitness is a state of readiness. Interesting. If you are fit, you can take that demand right now and you can deal with it. You can deal with that physical stress, that emotional stress. Same thing's true with psychological fitness, emotional fitness, right? So I'm, I'm pretty fit. And part of that is not because I'm so smart. Part of it is that I've taught this for decades. Yeah. I remember I had a woman who came to one of my seminars in, um, in her, I don't know, early 80s probably. And she would run in this room, five, 10,000 people. I think it was, you know, she went to a couple of 10,000 person events. And she would get in this front row, fight her way through there. And she'd jump and go for it. And one break, she came up to me, I was signing a book for her, and she says, uh, she goes, Mr. Robbins, I've seen you at like eight of these. <laughs> I've seen you like when you're really, I know, I can hear your voice, uh-huh. you're hurting, or you haven't slept. And she goes, you always seem to be so up all the time. How come right. you're so up? And I said, well, part of it is I attend all these seminars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm teaching it. So I, there's a fitness of that. But there's also, you know, I've, I've buried three fathers and, and one mother, and, you know, mm. that affects your life. I've... Uh, you know, I've had a physician look me in the eye and say, you have a tumor in your brain. Wow. And so I've had those moments that when you've had extreme stress and you push your way through it, you build psychological muscle. Yeah. It's like it takes a lot to knock me off. You know, in the early days, we didn't have $50,000 to keep the doors open. How do we do it? Then I had, you know, graduated to $5 million. <laughs> I graduated to uh, a partner that and mine who kind of didn't do things well, and I ended up owning $100 million because I had to take on his debts. Uh-huh. $100 million. And, but when you do all that stuff, you know, now my companies do five billion, you know, right. a year. So uh, you, you, you keep expanding what I would call really the circle of your, the threshold of your influence. Sure. You know, everybody has a threshold of control. And if you get beyond it, you kind of freak out. So it, it takes a little bit more. I don't have, I can't so you don't only have breakdowns. I don't have a breakdown. I mean, do I get pissed off or get frustrated <laughs> or tired? Yeah, but a breakdown, honestly, no. So, so how do you handle it if you get tired or something? I sleep <laughs> when I can. Okay, cool. I mean, it's honestly, it's pretty simple. But, you know, when I've, when I've had uh, challenging times, I mean, I have so many tools. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, it doesn't I, happen. I, I pull them out. It's, and mostly, it's, so it's like you as an athlete. You know, you don't just physically break down. Right. Uh, you take care of yourself. So You're constantly think, training that I think muscle. most people don't train their mind and emotions. It's like, mm-hmm. I think the most powerful muscles to me are not physical, as strong as important as they are. It's like... Faith is a muscle. Courage yeah. is a muscle. Determination is a muscle. Playfulness is a muscle. You know, passion unexpressed weakens. You know, faith untested gets smaller. Yeah. So uh, I'm always, I, I call it deep practice. I'm always pushing myself to the edge, yeah. and pushing yourself to the edge makes you stronger. Yeah. You know? So here's a guy who is a great example of someone. I mean, you know, when he was a very young, I want to say he was like 21 or something, he had a brain tumor and, um, you know, like, I, I, I heard it somewhere at some point years ago, the whole story, but, um, you know, dealing with something that's going to, that's life threatening at such a young age, which then actually, um, ended up serving him in some way. It's sp- it, like, I, from what I recall, and this is just c- straight off my memory. And if I get any of it wrong, forgive me in advance. But, um, from what I recall, um, this tumor actually pushed on his brain and released growth hormones. He was really small, which is why he's a really big guy. Now it led to these good, positive things at the time he, and he overcame it and he lived and survived and it made him stronger. He talked about losing, you know, multiple parental figures. Um, and I, I really love this idea of, you know, um, emotional fitness right spiritual fitness we're talking about here this is what you're you're getting a workout and um 
it's not supposed to be easy. If you've ever had a hard workout, um, you know, it's, it, you want to cry sometimes it's, it's painful, but the end result is, um, you being expanded and being more of what you're capable of becoming. You know, I love how he said, passion unexpressed weakens, faith untested gets smaller. It's just that. It's like, this is all sharpening your axe to become that spiritual warrior you're meant to become and approach it with that bravery, that courage, uh, and you will rise and, and move through it. Because one thing's for sure, you're going to, you know, you're going to get through it. You're an eternal being that's always been and always will be. If you don't like something, good news, change is guaranteed. So we're learning to become the center of the storm, the, the calm in the center of a hurricane, right? The, the, cal- the eerie calm of like every, all the madness is swirling all around and you just are not, uh, that is, your, that is your, your destiny to become that and not to be shaken and to allow it to be and trust, you know, like a master does who embraces whatever shows up because they know it's exactly what they need to become the next greatest and grandest version of themselves. And the fact that these trials and tribulations are bubbling up for anyone, any of you, um, like Amanda, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a really good sign from uh, the expanded perspective of higher self. And if you can bring that into the equation, inject that perspective into the equation, it's going to make the, um, the, the journey through it uh, much, much easier for you. Much, you, can, you can find peace in it and you can find strength in it. You can become a sweet sailor, as Elenario calls it here in this song. I love the title. Seemed appropriate. This is a new um, new track off uh, Elenario's new album, and I adore her music. Sweet sailor. Hope you enjoy the song, Sweet Sailor. Till next time, journey well. Love you all so, so much. Also, before we queue up today's song, I wanted to let you all know that we have finally created the Game with the Universe on our website, where you can choose the first number that comes to your mind, and it'll pull up that episode number of the podcast. I've been saying this is a great way to co-create synchronicity and magic with your higher self for quite some time by doing this manually. But now, if you go to positivehead.com, forward slash Y-O universe. There is a super fun and simple interface to play this game with your higher self. I firmly believe just by setting the intention to play in this way, it opens up the door for magic and it's a synchronistic way to hone in on nuggets of wisdom out of the huge catalog of episodes that are specifically appropriate for you at this time in your journey to becoming the next greatest and grandest version of yourself. And it also makes for a super fun way to engage and invite friends, family, people on social media to check out the podcast as well. So be sure to check out positivehead.com forward slash Y-O-U-N-I-V-E-R-S-E and be sure to tell all your friends so they can play a game with the universe, which also helps the show to reach new people, which I greatly appreciate. And as a quick reminder, be sure to also check out positivehead.com forward slash transformation if you're curious to learn more about Purium Superfoods and why I take them every day. On this journey of becoming the next greatest and greatest version of ourselves that we have all embarked upon, I can't stress the importance of managing your physical vibration enough. And quite honestly, Purium has put together the simplest plan I've found to do so, and I'm sincerely excited to share it with all of you. Lastly, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. There's a demon inside the cage. Of my 
memory snakes down deep like lava molten melting in each crevice creaking age of myself arise from lead and limbs envisioned as a heavy dead boat longing knocking thoughts up remind the key all this is fleeting reweaving echo singing singing turning over over I miss you I still miss you while you're here in the same room with the lives that we spoke to that the name do what the feeling soothe I miss you but no tell tells how I miss you sweet sailor in the same room with the lives that we spoke to Bye.